All right, here we go. Today we have D Meeks, the third member of Big Meech and Southwest T's original crew, the 50 Boys, before they formed BMF, who's actually depicted in the BMF TV series as B Mickey, played by actor Miles Truitt. Welcome to Vlad TV. Hey, what's up? What up, though? Well, we recently had your man, Edie Boyd, uh, on the show, who's the original plug for the 50 Boys. So it's only right that we follow it up with D Meeks. All right, thanks for the love. No doubt. No mm -hmm. doubt. Well, let's go ahead and start in the very beginning. So you grew up in Southwest Detroit. Yes, I grew up in Southwest Detroit in a part that is known as the whole. And I grew up down the street from Big Meach in Southwest T. And we lived like across where you had to be from there to come to there. Okay. And why is it called the hole? The hole is like nine streets, basically. It's three communities out there. It's Rouge, Down, Ecorse, and Southwest Detroit. But it's over there, it's like nine streets. So we like a different type of breed over there. And our side is like mostly families in over there. So it's kind of, it's a little different. Okay, and you yourself grew up in a two-family household? Uh, yes. Okay, so were you guys relatively stable or was your parents struggling? Uh, my family... All my family worked, my mother, my father, and I had five uncles and four aunties. So, yeah, my family had a little bit of money. My grandfather, I saved my grandfather, my grandmother, and my grandfather worked at Firestone at the time. So all of them was pretty stable. Okay, so you have the stable family. Yes. But outside your home, what was Detroit like in the 70s and 80s? Uh, Detroit, so it, it depends on what part you went to. You had your good parts of Detroit, you had your bad parts of Detroit. You had some places in Detroit that had like uh, model homes, model um, families, you no know, model citizens. Then you had some parts you go over there and you had your, your street people, your grime, and, and the people who, who meant you no good. Okay. And of course, Detroit is really known for the car industry. Yes. At one point, the car industry started to move out of Detroit, which really caused a massive effect to the economy. Yes. Okay. Did you see Detroit start to go downhill after that happened? Well, Detroit started going downhill yeah, when the car industry started leaving. But it was kind of like going downhill before then because we had started like losing a lot of uh, jobs and stuff out there. Like the, basically the big three, if you got hired as the big three back then, you were stable. Anything else besides construction or anything, you weren't sure. Okay. And, I mean, originally in Detroit, before a crack hit, heroin was the drug of choice. Yes. Okay. And how bad was, you know, the heroin epidemic in Detroit, you know, when you were still a kid? Heroin was a drug of choice, uh, and it's a drug of choice now. But heroin back then was, uh, you had heroin addicts everywhere. And if you sold heroin, and you was a heroin man, or you was the man. You had the big houses, the big cars, everybody knew who you was. But like I said, heroin is a different type of drug. When the heroin addicts need it, they don't care who you are. They will cut your head off for it. Yeah, I mean, I used to hear stories how like, you know, the big drug dealers used to just have like a heroin addict in their crew because yeah. they knew that he would do anything. Like, yes. you know, you would send him to go shoot up the whole house and he, no questions asked because they needed that fix so bad. That, that it just did not matter. Uh, you know, there's movies like, I'm sorry, there was a, a book I read called Dope Fiend by Donald Goins. Mm -hmm. And it started out, it, it, did you read that book, by the way? Yes, I read all Donald Goins, was all on Wonderful. Right. So remember that particular book, it starts out with a heroin house and the guy who's running it is having girls have sex with German shepherds because that's how badly they needed a hit. Well, you know, them stories be true. And like I said, most of the the, uh, the heroin guys were dope fiends. If, if you was a heroin guy and you was a dope fiend, you had the clientele. Because who better is to know the dope is good if you, you own it and you selling it? So a lot of the guys were on heroin that sold it. A lot of them wanting. Okay. And you actually started out selling heroin yourself. Yeah, I started selling heroin uh, when I was about 15. Okay, so here you are in this stable household. Yes. You know, you don't have to sell it. What made you start, you know, getting in the streets and actually doing this illegal activity? From where I'm from, you know, you see a lot of street stuff and all that. And I had uncles 
that were like eight or nine years older than me. So I, you know, trying to emulate my uncles, you know, they'd be in the streets and all that. And I was seeing how they was getting a little bit more money, you know, which I didn't have to do it at all. But, you know, they had like a different type of money. So that's what kind of made me want to try to, you know, sell the heroin. Okay, but that didn't go too well from what I understand. Nah, man, you know, when I first tried it, and I didn't know the game about it, man. You know, I was just really, you know, fresh in the game about the heroin. And I got beat a couple of times about, you know, for some packs and all that. And then it was a different type of atmosphere for the people trying to buy it. Everybody was like, want to do something to you, you know, to the point to where it wasn't even worth it. So I just, you know, left that alone at that, at that time because I was still young and, and naive. Okay. And like you said, you lived across the street from Big Meech in Southwest T. Down the street. Down the street, sorry. And when you started dabbling in the drug dealing, were they doing it as well, or did that come later? Well, at that time, I didn't know what they were doing. You know, we were friends and all that, but they were trying to do a little something, but we hadn't really hooked up like that at, at that time. But we knew, like, they were trying to do something, and I was trying to do something, but... It was separate to where, you know, hey, you, you do you right now and I'll do me and we'll see how it goes.